KTZ Entertainment presents Coffee Bar Stories, a talk show adjacent comedy podcast with your three hosts, Dad, Son, and Bubba. Live from the Coffee Bar, it's your DTZ News. All right, welcome back to the DTZ News. Uh, this is Sun, and uh, today is the day we announce the uh, contest. Uh, we want you to submit your funniest pot stories, whether that be your first time or maybe something else. Uh, we want you to send us your funniest pot story, and the winner will win a uh, Amazon gift card. Uh, you can submit your funniest pot stories to us either by our email, you can send them to us on Facebook, or you can go to the website and submit them where we have our skit submissions. And also, we want to encourage you to hurry because the contest will only run through 420. That's April 20th, and there is no pun. We're serious because we want you to have fun on that day. We don't want you to have to overwork trying to submit your pot story. We want you to be able to smoke your pot. Though uh, I will add an addendum that uh, submissions end at midnight on 420. So that way if you greened out a little and forgot to submit it, you still have till midnight of 420 to submit your story. After that, we will announce the winner on May 1st. The first episode of May. Yes, the first. May well, 1st. Yes. I'm not sure if that episode falls on the first. We'll give you a heads up on the exact episode date when it'll be announced because it may be a, a few days into May. You never know with us. Yeah. But that is a definite. And we still are want you to submit skits, to Just, you know, that we can yes, do. Yes, absolutely. And we would love to somebody to send us a skit to do and record it and send it, put it out there for you all and see what you think. So with that, DTD News, we'll move on to our next segment. Time now for Two Dad Jokes. If a child refuses to nap, are they guilty of resisting a rest? I used to play piano by ear. Now I use my hands. Do you need to get away? Or do you have a dream to travel abroad? Or your finance is just not doing it for you? Well then get ready to get away with the BTA! Our highly trained agents have spent countless hours of researching so we can offer three affordable packages. We have designed each package for the low income person. You know, folks who don't have any money. That's why we're excited to tell you all about these packages. First off, we have the budget package. This package offers an airfare on propeller airlines with only seven transfers. Then there's a top notch room at our half star hotel, janitor's closet. We also provide a pamphlet of attractions that have free admission. This package is vacation photo worthy. Now, if that package is still a little pricey for you, we have the premium budget package. With this one, it is scaled back a bit from the budget one. The accommodations are at the broke as a joke motel another janitor's closet that you will have to share with the cleaning cart. As well, you'll have a few less attractions to choose from. And yes, the flight has doubled the transfers, but it's still the same trusted airline. Okay, now if that package is still just outside of your price range, we still have a third one. We call it the Executive Premium Budget. This is a rock bottom price. With this package, the transportation is broken into three parts. You'll first head to Mexico, where our affiliate in Tijuana at the bus station will get you one of the 13 hour bus ride to Belize. Then, from there, you board a boat that a loosely affiliated ranger has arranged for you. Once you've docked, you'll have to hitchhike the few hundred miles to a small, quaint, poverty stricken town where you'll stay in an old army tent behind the town's only tavern. And as far as attractions, I mean, they got locals. So now remember, if you have very little money to damn near not having anything at all, Budget Travel Agency, the BTA, has the travel location package for you. Call or visit our website at dtzentertainment.com. Howdy, I'm Ed Dalton, and I have a driving school. I've been done teaching folks to drive for 40 years. Here at Ed Dalton's driving school, you be learned the rule that you use on the road, 
then you're taking out to put your hand on driving. I'll take you up through the basics of right turn, left turn, U turn, and the all important way to park without looking like a douchebag. As an added bonus, you'd receive a good old lesson and the proper hand signals for all the dumbass drivers you will incur on the roads. So when you're ready to learn and to drive, come on in. I'm Ed Dalton. I have a driving school. Ed Dalton's driving school is a holding of slow court. Hello, folks. It's time again for the DTZ Podcast Network Telethon. We now have the Members Only Club with a ton of specials. So everyone really needs to become a member now to take full advantage of these special deals. And to tell you more is Son from Coffee Bar Stories. Thanks, Jack. Okay, folks, I'm going to tell you how cool it is to be a DTZ member. See, as a member, you'll still get a lot of your favorite shows, such as Dumbasses Handling Dynamite and the critically acclaimed Planting More Than Flowers, fuckers. But now, with a membership, comes access to all new extras, such as a special episode that hasn't been aired. Plus, you'll get awesome shows only for members, such as Holy Shit, That Guy's a Loser. Ah, oh, shit, I think that bitch gave me something. It doesn't stop there. You'll also get the number one top-rated show. What the fuck are you looking at? So join now and be a member of the greatest network in the world. Thank you, son. Wow, that is an outstanding deal. Hurry and start enjoying these great membership perks today. Also, as an added bonus, let the operator know you want the gold statics. You won't be disappointed. DTZ Podcast Network Membership Club is trademarked by Sloan Court. Hey, welcome back to the Coffee Bar Discussion, and uh, today is a little special. We are currently missing Dad, but uh, he'll be here for his parts later on throughout the episode. But in his place, we all have a guest host, um... We have our buddy over there. Um, we're gonna call him Ranger for the time being. Uh, how you doing? I'm doing all right. And um, we don't really know how we're gonna, you know, do this whole segment. Uh, we got a few things we're gonna talk about since it is the coffee bar discussion. But uh, we're gonna take the first few minutes or so of it to just kind of uh, talk about Ranger. Or yeah, Ranger. I don't know why I wanted to say Ranger, but uh, <laughs> Ranger. So first off, we'll get out of the way. How do we know each other? I guess that would be the easiest way to put it. Um, it's hard to go about it. Uh, so we met in high school when yes. you transferred in to the same school that I transferred in mm-hmm. two years prior. Yeah, that's... Yeah. And so I was like, you, you just ended up at our table and I was like, yep, I know how it feels. Come on. Like, we're all going to stick together now. <laughs> even, and, even though you were a grade above me, I was like, yeah, you can come with, you can come with us. Quite literally, uh, Ranger over there was my uh, only form of like solace for the first year until I was able to make some more friends and feel comfortable. He was like the only one that I'm like, hey, yo, who, who, sh- who should I talk to? Uh, where and should then, I go? What should I do? And then you were like, hey, you want to come over after school one day? And I was like, sure, I, I, don't, I don't fucking mind. Like, it probably won't be for too long. And I'm, my dad's not going to be home for a few hours. I'll be fine, even if I can't ask him. And then come to find out, y'all live half a block down the street from me. Yeah, quite literally. And I the was, was like, what up. the fuck? You met Squirt? Yeah, so so that's how I met Squirt uh, for the first time. And then after after you graduated during my senior year, he was a freshman. And so then I was there with him. The, uh, you, he took my place, basically. You're like, all right, yeah. great. Now I got to show but, another one of these idiots around. But I still remember you showing up to my senior science classes for no reason. Like, you had already graduated. Yeah. And I, you were just <laughs> coming back for like. I don't it. remember. I don't know. I don't remember why I was either. Um, Yeah. Boredom. For some reason, I kept yeah. showing up to his senior science classes. And um, there, I was also... 
Actually, no. I don't think it was your senior science classes. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Are you sure? Because mm -hmm. I, I remember. I yes, I'm remembering Earth Science, and, and there was, was a there was a bullshit. substitute there, and they thought I was a part of the class. They and I kept and I showed up in like a tank top, some shorts, and what flip the flops. Hell? <laughs> and I, I, I was just I was just following him around the entire day, uh, just going to his classes. And when one of the teachers that knew me, they're like. Mm -mm, you gotta stay out there. Uh, I would just go fuck around somewhere else yeah. inside the school or talk <laughs> to the other teachers. But uh, there were substitutes, lots of substitutes this day. And they all thought I was a part of the class. They're like, sir, you're gonna have to go down to the office and uh, uh, you're not in dress code. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm like, what are you gonna do? I'm like, write me up. What you gonna do? Uh, yeah, and I remember this. And you were like, I don't care. They, uh, that's right, because I already graduated. What are they going to yeah, do? Exactly. They're going to write me up? And they were like, excuse me? And you were like, yeah, I'm already graduated. I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't even go I, here. I, I like, I'm, I, it does not matter for me. <laughs> like, quite literally, do I, not go here. I am your guest at the moment. Uh, yeah, I don't, uh, yeah, for whatever reason. Um, I had, and when I was doing it, I did see the principal. You got balls. What Dude, the I, I listen, and the thing is, I did see the principal. We, Me and him both. We saw yeah. the principal quite a few different times going through there. And the superintendent, they both knew I graduated. They even talked to us. Didn't say anything. They just did they, not care. They they asked I... why, why. They did ask why am I here? And I just said I was bored. Just gonna follow him around for the rest of the day. And then all they said is, "You're glad. Be glad it's Friday." Uh, <laughs> I I <laughs> what was the hell? on such weirdly good terms with both the superintendent and the principal. Yeah, it was my, weird. That's strange. My freshman year. When this little uh, burger shack next to the high school opened up, oh yeah, at the uh, after what is it like Memorial Day when it's, after it opens up? I don't know, something like that though. Wh which one's the earlier in the year, Labor Day or Memorial Day? Oh, I'm not too sure. I couldn't tell you. Mm, I think Memorial Day is first. Yeah, because Labor Day is around a, sp a certain day. I'll, I'll just put it at that. <laughs> After they open up, during we'll we'll say Memorial Day. Pardon me if I'm wrong. We're not gonna we're not gonna harm you. Right. And so I had just gotten a ten dollar bill from my father's friend for fixing his uh, airsoft pistol, and uh, and so I was like, I'm totally gonna go order lunch at this place. And so I walked over there and I ordered my food and I ordered a root beer float and I sat there and I pulled out my phone I don't even, if I even had a phone and I was just like <laughs> sitting there none here what you doing and I look up and I see the superintendent but I didn't know who he was mm -hmm. and I was like just waiting for my food and he was like you know we don't have off-campus lunch right and I was like no I, I I didn't know like I just transferred in you know we had off-campus lunch at my old high school which we did not he <laughs> didn't even know that <laughs> and I was like, so I, and I, you know, my dad told me stories about how, you know, he had off-campus lunch, so I just, I thought we still did. He was like, no, and I was like, oh, sorry. He was like, it was okay. And then he ordered his food and stood there and waited with me. <laughs> and I got my food and I walked right back in the same door I walked out of and that was that. Yeah, uh, I really could not tell you what what type of uh, coating I dipped my balls in that day, though. That I basically followed them around, because <laughs> yeah, the way you were looking at me the entire time I'm telling this is like, dude, why weren't the cops called on you? Yeah, Cause... <laughs> Cause my high school experience was completely fucking. Oh different. yeah, um, it helped that I was. I'm not gonna say popular, but I was known and I and I wasn't hated. Like we'll put I it thought that way. I, was I wasn't a really skeleton. liked. But I had people that did like me, and I was on good terms with a lot of the teachers. I wrote, a lot of the teachers did like me, so I did have that going for me. Like, Thank, thanks to Squirt, I got back into so many high school football games for free. Oh my god. Uh, because of me being in the drama club uh, when I was in high school, I never had to pay to, do, uh, to go to the plays. And I think one play, I just kind of showed up to rehearsals and whatnot, and I'm like, okay, right, so what am I doing? Because I was the tech crew. And they're like, oh, all, all the tech positions are filled. Where have you been? Like, uh, 
we we've, we've been looking for you, you know, so you could do the lights, but we already got someone to do it. Where have you been? I'm like, nobody told me shit. I'm over here trying to find out when the meetings are. Every time I ask, someone tells me they're not going on. Then comes to the conclusion, <laughs> all right, fine. I'm just going to sit here and uh, sit in the booth and I'll be the backstage manager. And looked at the director. He looks at me and he's like, all right. And <laughs> not once, I don't think, through that entire play did I have any clue what was going on. Like, I had no clue what the play was about. Still can't tell you. I can tell you what the first play that I helped out with was. Um, I can tell you what the last one was. But that middle one? Nope. Uh, something to do with the coffee table and a drunk. That's about it. They, A lot of beer bottles they let us bring in. But I just basically stood in that booth uh, where they had the projector and just watched the play for free. And it was a shit show. I was never in drama, so to speak. But I was in a play. I was in a Willy Wonka play. And I acted. But I want to put acted in quotes here. Extreme I was just a, quotes. Yeah, extreme quotes. I was just a piston in a machine. <laughs> and yeah. I was dressed as an Oompa Loompa. I have been a lights operator. A booth manager, I guess. We'll put that instead of... Uh, being a backstage manager since I never went backstage and then there, the last play I did I was the backstage manager and if you've ever tried to get a bunch of high schoolers to follow set rules that you were given to and you're one of the well okay in my case I wasn't the smallest but you're not really the most authoritative person there and when you're trying to get a bunch like 15 uh, the high school students all going through puberty raging hormone issues and trying to get them to get off their fucking phones and to put it inside a lockbox because they won't get the fuck off of them <laughs> it's horrible that's funny I don't I've gotten cussed out so many times I almost got punched I had to wait for them to set it down when they would go run out there real quick and I would just snatch it and uh my buddy Fluffy we've uh a little throwback to him I had him on the first season but uh he, he brought in this fucking uh like crate that he built and he, uh, he welded a fucking lock to it and uh, just started shoving people's phones in there and then <laughs> locked it. And, oh, we got in trouble. <laughs> we got in some big trouble. We basically stole 15 people's phones is what they were trying to claim. Uh, somebody wow. claimed we broke That's their fucked. screen. A uh, whole bunch of bullshit. But, uh, so this is my little PSA to any, uh, I highly doubt any fucking uh, high schoolers are listening or anything like that. They're going through drama club. And I highly, highly doubt that they're uh, actors, too. But if there is, stop being fucking assholes. The world doesn't revolve around you. <laughs> it's just <laughs> a high school play, man. Play by the rules and just get it done. Those tech guys, they're, they, they yeah. have whole horrible lives, bro. They call, it hell, they call it Tech Week Hell Week for a reason. That's my tirade over. <laughs> All right, so I had a little question I wanted to throw in. Mix things up. Oh, totally. Um, Let's, uh, we can do a whole uh, randomized thing for this. So, what you want? I have been watching s some sports as of late. Ew. I guess the old man in me is coming out to play. But uh, I've been watching UFC. The fighting. The Yeah, the fighting. The MMA. Yeah. Yeah. And it's wild. These guys tear each other the hell up. Oh, yeah. Way better than that. Uh, theatrical wrestling i mean yeah i like it more than wwe because this is real it's yeah. raw and if you don't you don't like seeing blood you're not gonna like this because these guys like rip each other apart the weirdest thing about watching ufc for me is the fact that the fucking punches they throw visually look so weak oh yeah but will fuck a person up Oh it's yeah, it's, wild. it's it's uh, it's weird. I've, I've I haven't really seen many. Uh, you've uh, Bubba, you've shared a few of them with me, um, and yeah. or shown me ones, and maybe you've sent me a few. But uh, no, it's it's I couldn't. I, I'll look at them and go, nope, nope. Uh, my jaw would be over there. My arm would be over there. My uh, head would be <laughs> in a million different pieces. <laughs> it's somewhere, but, but I, I, you know. But I, yeah, that also brings me to ask the question: Did uh, either of you play any sports when you were younger? I've played a few. Uh, growing up, I played baseball for a few years, and then 
in middle school, I did wrestling. After Big that, sweaty ball touching wrestling. Ew. The leotard. I, I was in sixth grade. I was fifty-five pounds. Mm. That's when I started wrestling, and because of my weight, I was the only one of three people in my weight class. So no matter what tournament I went to, I always placed. Second or third. <laughs> <laughs> so either way, you won. So either way, I moved forward and up, and I went all the way to state in these tournaments just because <laughs> there were only three of us. No matter what happened, all That's three crazy. of us were moving forward. Wow. What about you, son? Uh, so I, when I was in elementary school, this is the one and only time I've ever played sports, was I played basketball. And... If y'all want to picture a young little son at the age of like nine or ten, because he's 25 now, he's not going to be that cute ever again. <laughs> okay, let's be honest. Uh, Ten-year-old son was a train wreck. It's like he got hit by a bus. He was ugly as hell. But yeah, um, I was like maybe 60 pounds soaking wet. Uh, <laughs> you, can you collaborate with that? I've always been twigs, yeah. basically. Yeah, you've been a goddamn twig your entire life. Um, and you look way better now than you did back then. You were like, I, I mean, you were like Gollum. Yeah, same, I, same here. I mean, I but, was one sixteen in yeah. freshman year. And so by the time I graduated, I was one twenty fucking one. I know. I came into. Uh, 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 I'll address that later. But um, so basically, yeah, we have ten year old son, uh, like sixty pounds soaking wet, emaciated looking motherfucker. And this is not because I was neglected. This was because I don't know how to control uh, my uh, eating habits. Of yeah, I have a horrible, uh, horrible eating disorder. But that's besides the point. Um, so I'm only like four foot two, if that. Uh, probably could be classified legally as a midget, but you don't do that <laughs> to children. Not just yet. You give them a chance. <laughs> but i decided i wanted to play basketball for whatever reason and so i sign up and i guess it, it being elementary school no child left behind uh even the crappiest skinniest shortest looks like they're gonna fart and die kids can be joined but whatever um i got on the team and i don't remember much I do remember my old, old elementary school's gym and trying uh, to, we're doing the dribble, uh, dribble tests, uh, passing tests, shit like that. What you laughing at? What's wrong? What's wrong? <laughs> dribble these cheeseburgs. <laughs> but, uh, dribble these cheeseburgs. But basically, uh, I remember uh, fucking everything up. And the sad thing is, uh, there was only maybe like eight of us. How many is on the team? Five? I don't remember. I, I've never played basketball. Oh my god! All right, I, um, I need my, to Google this because I really did, need to know not, because. And was it the coach, the? Uh, it was the ISS uh, teacher. Yeah, I was about to say. Oh no! No, he knew how to make you feel bad. Oh yeah, he did. Um, that's a whole. If that's the whole. If you get me onto another tirade, I'm gonna have to punch you in the balls because I'm too awesome. But uh, let me Google basketball because I don't know. This, this proves that I have no clue or no right to even be playing the sport. <laughs> um, 12. In so, no. Eight people would not have been able to play. My first thought in my head before I even opened my stupid mouth was right. 14. There was 14 people on the team. Okay. Oh, shit. Yeah. So, that means guaranteed Two I was warmers. in every well, single yeah, game. 14. Uh, that, yeah, that's the yeah, problem. Uh, uh, there, there's well, 14 on roster, not, yeah. not on the field. Yeah, that, that's what I'm trying to get at. Cool. Uh, that's the problem. There sh we should have had maybe a little more. Because um, I was only on the bench maybe one game out of the entire season. And I was bad. I double dribbled down the entire court. Every oh. time I got the ball, no matter where I was at, I'd switch court, switch sides. The only thing I was good at was dribbling. Dude, listen, I was bad. Oh, I, I just had really good hand-eye coordination at a young age. Picture me, uh, picture like the... Uh, from, from baseball, I think. Now picture uh, Gollum's son on the court, all right? At the home, home side basket. Uh, he gets past the ball. Now... Every time he gets past the ball, he goes over. So this time, yes, he's on the home side. He gets the thing, goes over to the visitor's side. Um, even if he's at the visitor's side, he's going back to home. Mm -hmm. Every time, just keeps going back and forth. He thought, okay, 
So when you get the ball, you go to the other side and you try to score in that basket. No, that's not how that works. Also, don't run with the ball. You gotta bounce that shit. Mm -hmm. I mean, that goes into the, you know, dribbling and I double dribbled like a motherfucker. Uh, I'm really bad at basketball. Yeah. Um, so now, anytime I try to throw things uh, or anything and I miss, I just blame it on when I was in basketball in elementary school and I completely fucked that up myself. <laughs> Uh, so, I guess now I'll talk about the sports I was in. I was in wrestling in elementary school. Ew. Ew that's uh, so young. And middle elementary. school. And some of high school. Uh, I was also in basketball in elementary school, I believe. It was either elementary or middle school. I didn't like it, so I left. Because, like I said, the coach was the ISS teacher. Yeah. And he knew how to make you feel bad. And I didn't need that in my life. So... <laughs> Uh, I didn't continue with basketball. And then in high school, my dumb epileptic ass decided, um, I'm going to play, ba I'm going to play, uh, football. Oh, yeah. So I joined I the football that. team. Yeah, now, you were, weren't you the ball? <laughs> I might as well have been. I was a skinny kid in high school. Yeah, I know. And now you're kind of fat. I so got fat after high hands. school. I got pretty fat after high school. Um... You just sell but it, I was you? pretty skinny, and they made me the running back. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Neither do I. I don't know. I don't know football whatsoever, and it kind of sucks. But I was that, told that means you were you would be the one that they the quarterback would hand the ball to and run down. Wide receivers are the ones who run downfield immediately and wait for the quarterback to throw it to them. Okay. Yeah. He has they no made, clue what he's talking about. They okay. Made me a, they made yeah, me a dude. running back. And said, They're wide as soon as you get the, the wide ball. receivers receive wide, okay? So what they do is they open their arms really wide <laughs> and they receive people. The quarterbacks, they go up to people and they give them the quarters back uh, when you buy the tickets. They're like, okay, here's your quarter. Here's Shut your the quarter. fuck up. But anyway, I, uh, what I was they told. Give them quarter jack. <laughs> what, the, <laughs> what the coach told me was that I was to keep my eye on the ball. And when I get the ball, I haul ass. Yeah. Well, I'm this running, story coach. abruptly ends because because I was in practice, got tackled the shit out of by a kid way bigger than me. Oh. And I mean, way bigger than me. I know exactly who you're talking about, too. Yeah, he knocked the living shit out of me. And uh, then I was told by my personal bully I'm getting a no. not to uh, go to practice because we didn't have enough people for the team. So I just never showed back up. Hmm. I'm sorry, what was that? I can't hear a word you're saying, buddy. I don't know if we, if we want to say his name. Oh, probably not. Oh, and I, I now I know what you're mouthing. But, um... Sad, sad. Mm -hmm. Wrestling was, like, the only sport that I enjoyed. Mm -hmm. And then I don't want to say that I'm an eSport guy now, but I kind of am when I play competitively. But I'm not that great. <laughs> um, with eSports, uh... The only one, and I, I don't know if you guys qualified as an e-sport, uh, I think it's trying to gain traction, is um, speedrunning, uh, mm. like running games real fast. Be before, and, we, before we go to e-sports, I do have a couple of actual sports questions. Mm. Or not questions, uh, stories. Oh, go for it. Uh, Hopefully you come up with them today. <laughs> because of wrestling, it was thanks to that that at the ripe old age of 12, I had six pack abs because I only weighed 55 pounds <laughs> <laughs> so like I was looking at old pictures of me when I was 12 and I was like what the fuck is that <laughs> like damn he's ripped right I was, I was like, like why can't fuck? I look like that and I was like why didn't like I get noticed more what the hell is this shit <laughs> I was like no wonder I got away with so much at the pool oh trust <laughs> me it's it sucks being as skinny as we are and uh People really don't understand that, and they're like, "Oh, it's a blessing. Look at how skinny you are." No, man, it's a uh, curse. You you try living uh, and being extremely uh, just looking emaciated all the time and looking like you're being neglected, and you you could be eating like five, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve times a day, and like because if, of that, if fucking. There's a, if there's a weight requirement that has a minimum, we might just barely make it. Oh yeah, I'm I'm it's that trying fast to gain weight myself. That'll get you. Yeah, yeah. I, I've got a fast metabolism. You, uh, it's so the, the hard to gain was, weight. The thing that was fucked up for me is that my twin Excuse brother, me. his metabolism was double as as mine. Yeah. 
and he was he still weighed more than me and that's what I didn't understand like how Strange. is he burning double my calories but still maintaining more he knows how to beat the system weight. man he went to www.pimpmylife.com I, I just try to eat peanut butter as much as possible I like yeah, I, I like I, nutter I, butters I, I, I protein bars mm -hmm. 20 gram protein bars um, they're a little pricey but the best for flavor quest that I found yeah they're they're really good we went on a tangent. Uh, did we agree. ever finish your uh, story? We kind of know oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then the other one was baseball, and so there was one wait, day. Wait, 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 wait. What was the first story? He had six-pack abs, man. Oh, oh okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, okay, yeah. I was just trying and to make sure. That's right, 12. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, that, that, yeah. okay, that ended, and then we went into our tirade about it. All right. I'm, I'm just trying. I'm high, yeah, No, you're good. You're good. And then, <laughs> so the other one was baseball. Uh, We're always high here at the coffee bar. I, I stopped playing baseball before I started doing wrestling. You were in and, baseball for a while. Yeah. Weren't you in baseball when I met you? No, because I that, that was in high school. I stopped playing baseball before middle school. Oh, okay. Uh, but I played it all throughout elementary school. It was the Boy Scouts, that kind of thing. But we were playing a game of fall ball, and uh, it was just I was always in uh, either right or left field. And I was in right field. Uh, that day or that night because it was it was a night game and I was so bored like I wasn't in my like down ready stance squatted down I was just standing there with my arms on my sides just, and I see the ball get pitched and I the make contact and then I just I see the ball fly up mm -hmm. I, I don't even move normally as an outfielder you're supposed to step back and then either run forward or backwards if more if you need I just, I didn't even move, I was just like, yeah, just moved my arm up, caught the ball, threw it, went back to standing there, and just was bored for the rest of the game. I'm not going to lie to you, when I was younger, baseball had always interested me, but everybody that I knew that played baseball was kind of a dick. had always broken their fucking arm. Oh, okay, yeah, that's even worse. I, I never understood that. Um, uh, well, not because of baseball, never mind. My brother did break his arm <laughs> in elementary school, but... But for, like for kickball. No, that, that, I've always always kind of interested in baseball. Wait, as well. wait, 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 wait. Reverse. How do you break your arm playing kickball? <laughs> oh, you don't want to know, man. <laughs> Trying to catch no, that so ball, we, tackling someone. In, in in elementary school, we had gotten a new student in, and they were it wasn't me. They were playing. <laughs> they were playing. <laughs> this is in Missouri. Yeah. They were playing kickball outside, on the blacktop. Oof. Oh. And my brother went to go hit him with the ball. Get him out. Yeah, tag him out and everything. And this motherfucker slid on the blacktop oh. right into my brother's legs and knocked him down as my brother was holding the ball in one arm and tried to catch himself with one arm. Oh, yeah, oh, Dumbass. And just... Oh. Yeah. See... I'm, and we're going off in a huge tirade from what we really wanted to talk yeah. about. We were going to yeah. play. We kind of planned to this yes. out earlier, but back to, uh, back to esports. You were, you were no, saying. no, no. I actually want to continue on with what you're saying. Kind of a little diversion. We'll go back yeah. to esports in yeah. a second. That's always a thing we can do. But for right now, you said you broke. Uh, he broke his arm uh, playing kickball. Uh, I actually in an elementary school broke my wrist uh, on the thing, and, and not really on the blacktop. I don't know if any of our viewers really know, and I'm gonna try to Google search exactly what I'm talking about. But picture this, you're at recess, okay? And it's not like it is now. I don't know if kids nowadays, uh, I'm going back from the elementary school I went to, and every time we visit that town and we see all the elementary school, there's nothing there. But go back in time to when there was something on that playground. There was these monkey bar things. And now there was a set of monkey bars. You can hold that bong for one second, sir. Uh, now there was these monkey bars, but there was also this seesaw that had handles in the middle of it that can people can hold on to and hang while two other people on the oh. other side can seesaw on. Now, nobody was playing with it one day, and I was just kind of grabbing onto the middle two uh, loops and swinging back and forth, jumping on it, and then dropping. And doing that for a good long while, and I guess something or someone distracted me as I was doing it, and when I went to go and uh, swing back, I guess my hands let go, and as I was falling, for whatever reason, my arm shoots directly behind my back. And I land, I don't know if it was like the small of my back or whatnot, but I land on like this hard ass rubber pellet and just snap my wrist straight in half. And then here's the God kicker. Damn. Here's the kicker of that day. Not only did I break my wrist, about 
five, not even five, like two minutes before, not even a minute, not, no, it had to have been like a minute before, my, uh, my buddy's current, like my buddy's current girlfriend, she broke her arm playing tag with somebody else, literally like a minute before I broke my wrist, like fell, tripped, fell, and just shattered the shit out of her arm. All I remember is sitting in the nurse's office, bawling my eyes out because I broke my wrist, crying. And then she's sitting next to me, not crying at all, just being like, just kind of in shock. Like, my arm's really broken. And I'm over here like, no, it's broken. I know it's broken. I'm in so much fucking pain right now. I can't take this. Just crying. And the nurse is like, why are you being such a pussy? Look at her. She's not crying. Like, bitch, she doesn't even know if it's broken or not. She's in shock. I know it is. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> It was, yeah, but now to move it back on to, like, esports and shit, um, speedrunning. And I, I should, since our demographic uh, on this podcast, it fluctuates a lot. Um, um, now, I don't know if the viewers know that. They don't have our analytics. I do, though. <laughs> and it, it does. It, and, and that's not a bad thing. It, uh, it, we get a lot of different types of people who like to listen to it, a lot of different age groups. And some people may know what speedrunning is and what an esport is, and some people may not. And esports, to clarify that, is electronic sports. So it's it's video game sports. So Essential. now, yeah, like nowadays, uh, people are competitively playing Call of Duty, uh, League of Legends, uh, Warframe. I don't think Warframe. No, one not of them. Warframe. Uh, <laughs> certain certain multiplayer games can be competitively played and uh, now considered sports. And there's this niche, uh, there's this niche group of uh, video gamers. Who uh, have developed, or not really developed, but they've been they they play video games, and their goal to play them is to play them really fast. And so they'll take a. I'm gonna take a game that a lot of people should know, so a brand name. So Zelda, they'll take the Ocarina of Time, and uh, that game, if you play it normally, uh, not speed running, it should take you good maybe. I'm gonna say eight to twelve hours to play through that entire game. Now a speed runner is going to. If they want to do it 100%, they get everything in the game, and when they beat the game, look at their save file, it says 100, they can do it in about four hours. And now, if they wanted to do it, like, just beat the game with as what you need to beat it, and that's it, and just get straight to the ending, they can do it in 14 minutes. And they've even brought it even lower with some other tricks and other types of glitches, because the, what they do is they usually abuse the video games and how broken some of them are, and especially uh, older games. Yeah. Uh, all, uh, all, all the little bugs and glitches. Yeah, all the little bugs and glitches that'll happen in the program. They find ways to abuse these to uh, get further into the game. And it, some people like to say, oh, but that's cheating. But uh, as long as you're not typing in an actual cheat code, this is an unintended mechanic, is how we like to put it. And, um, <laughs> we don't, uh, the, the whole speedrunning community, and I'm shoving myself in there, but I haven't been in it in about a few years now. But the speedrunning community and you know, all about it, um, cheating is actually, it's, it's a big problem. Uh, and uh, people, the way that a lot of people would be like, oh, so they're using cheat codes and whatnot to beat the game. No, it's even worse than that. They're taking their videos, since if you're going to speedrun, you have to record yourself doing it yeah. for a proof. They're they splicing? Take, yeah, they'll splice their videos, and what that means is uh, they'll cut the video and uh, put a different gameplay of over it, something that we did better than what they were actually doing. And some people will go so in-depth to uh, just even fake everything completely with a tool-assisted speedrun, and that's basically where you let an AI do it for you. And wow. Yeah, it has a whole bunch of cheating and whatnot rampant. Uh, a good guy, if you want to know about it um, on YouTube, is Carl Jobst. Uh, he does a lot of GoldenEye news for uh, 007 on the N64. Yeah, I know who he is. Okay. But uh, he also, co if there's a, anything that happens in the speedrunning community, he usually covers it. So that's a good guy to go use. But um, to move it even further from just that, since that's my favorite East, my only type of favorite sport. I mean, um, um, the only game I've ever speed ran was Legend of Zelda: Link to the Past. See, because I, you can you can do that one in like two minutes. Yeah, um, I tried to do it, but I don't have the patience to learn the tricks. Speed oh, dude, I, I watched a 14 minute video on YouTube, uh -huh. and Bing Bada Boom, I knew how to do it just following along. 
uh, what, what a lot of people don't understand uh, when they look at it, and uh, a lot of older people too, they'll look at it, they don't understand the whole you know, eSport, or, or getting, even getting paid to play video games. Game Theory. Uh, one of the, uh, the time and dedication it takes to actually like try to learn how to play the games, like how to do it as fast as possible, and try to do it and get world records or something like that, it takes so much dedication. There's this one runner that's been doing this for about 10 or so years, maybe even 20 at this point. His name is ZFG, and he has had the world record in 100% Ocarina of Time uh, on the N64 for about 10 years straight. Uh, now I'm not so sure about it now. Uh, maybe someone's usurped his throne. Maybe he's claimed it back. I'm not too sure. But this man has put so much time and effort into just this one video game. Uh, but you can tell, and it shows. And it, the de the dedication this man puts into it, and, and you can hear it into his voice. Uh, any type, if you want to know who's a good speedrunner, the more monotone, and the, the more monotone they are, the better they are. Uh, the better that you are for watching them. And if you, uh, anytime they screw up, all they can do is nice. And, uh, when something really bad happens. And, uh, normally when you'd watch somebody else and they'd maybe, like, throw their stuff or get angry, and they just go, this is great. You're probably watching, probably a world record holder right there. They've, they've composed their anger and all of that into just one single, just nice. <laughs> and it moves on. Because yep. I don't know if you've ever seen that, uh, seen some speedrunners uh, like on Twitch or something like that, and they, seen they someone screw something up. They absolutely do. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Some but will the, wreck the, some things. The uh, the only really spe speed runs that I enjoy watching are that of the Soulsborne series. Those are actually, and not this this uh, episode is gonna go over. I and and I, I've actually done some heads. of the speedrunning strats that I've seen in those videos. Oh, it, while playing the game to kill like bosses quickly or whatnot. The only esport I ever got into pretty heavily was League of Legends. Unfortunately, um, I say that because that game sucks your soul away. Um, it's not easy. It's very complicated, and there's a lot of shit you need to know. It's not user friendly. Mm -hmm. Like you can you want to play that game for fun, but you can't. Yeah. Cause everybody's trying, and I made it to gold, and that alone took me like five, six years of learning how to play the game correctly. Because I always fi figure, oh, I play the game, I play whatever way I want, I can play whatever character I want, but that's not the way the game works. Yeah. There's like metas. There's certain characters that are strong during certain seasons it's it, it got crazy so i stopped playing i've only ever speed ran maybe one game wasn't really too good at it though um i think with that though um we're gonna end the discussion went on for quite a while probably doesn't feel yeah, like it does it it does feel like it oh. <laughs> so with we're gonna go and move on to our next segment you all have a uh, wonderful three milliseconds Join us Monday nights on the Roller Radio Show, putting independent music in the listeners' ears with DJ CO1 and DJ Craig Allen. It's where the hits just keep coming. Hey everyone, I'm Bubba, the newest host of the Coffee Bar Stories. Dad, son, and I are excited to bring in season two to y'all. Expect some new stories, guests, and several other new goodies for everyone. So keep your eyes out for Coffee Bar Stories Season 2 coming this November. Coffee Bar Stories is a DTZ Entertainment presentation. And now for some Dad's Life of Device. Beggars can't be choosers, except they still try. If you can't be kind, at least be vague. Always keeping yourself safe from trouble that way. Now, was that a good idea? During an argument at Burger King, a Florida man threw a cheeseburger at his girlfriend with such force that when the sandwich struck the back of her head, the woman fell over a curb onto the ground. Police charge. According to the criminal complaint, 
James Hunt, 41, and his girlfriend and cohort argued Saturday afternoon about the victim not eating her food at a local Burger King in the Tampa area. The dispute turned violent, cops say, when the 53-year-old woman began to leave the restaurant. That's when Hunt allegedly threw a cheeseburger at the victim, striking her in the back of the head. The action caused the victim to fall over a curb onto the ground. The victim's chin and lip hit the pavement, resulting in an abrasion and a cut. Upon arrival at the Burger King, cops observed blood on the victim's shirt and shorts and cheese on her shirt and in her hair. A Burger King worker told cops that before Hunt walked away from the restaurant, he struck the victim in the head while she was on the ground. While Hunt reportedly admitted to the throwing the burger at the victim, he denied striking her while she was down. He also told police that he did not think the cheeseburger strike caused her to slip on the curb and fall onto the ground. Charged with a felony domestic battery, Hunt is being held in the county jail on $1,500 bond. Now, do you think that was a good idea? <laughs> There is a big jackass in this room. Balls getting a little cheesy? Does your girlfriend wear a gas mask when you take off your pants? Well, use the tuck and scrub and you'll shave the testicle filth right off. See, our patent tested design was developed by the top Argentina engineers. This product has been put through countless trials till we got it right. Sure, there were many testicular casualties, but you're gonna break a few eggs to make the perfect omelet. But look at what we got now, the greatest ball scrubber also includes the deodorizer. The Tuck and Scrub is another fine product of Slowcore. Slowcore is not responsible for any injuries caused by this product. Welcome back to the Scamix. Okay, folks, hopefully we find out if Bob Scamic gets naked and covered in shit or what. Now on with the show. Hey, Bob. It sure is a nice day. In fact, it's so nice, I had stopped on the way in and bought some pastries from the fancy bakery shop. Go on, help yourself. Oh, boy. Peter, them pastries smell and look great. I'm kind of hungry. Thanks, man. Also, get some coffee. It's fresh. It'll go good with the pastries. Then meet me on the showroom floor. Oh, I guess you're ready to settle the bet then. Well, Bob, before we do that, I want you to take a real good look at this showroom and out there at the lot. Then tell me what do you see. All right, Peter, I'll tell you what I see. Hmm. Oh, an empty lot and showroom like I told you. My guy Humphrey came through. You know, sell the cars, so... Stop. Look at the empty car trailer. We have no cars to sell now for a week. A whole week plus... All our salesmen will have to be out for another week, and that's with no pay. They're going to be pissed off. This is real bad for business. Having no cars at all, people go somewhere else to buy. Are you trying to get out of your bet? What the fuck? Are you not getting this? No cars, no business, and where the hell is that fucking Humphrey at? This is a fucking disaster. Well, Peter, can we just call up Sally Johnson to see if she can find a full car trailer or two? New cars here in a day or so? Sally's good, but we're in need of cars right now. Today. Wait, Humphrey's calling. Give me one sec. Hello? Yeah, hey, we need you to get down here to the car lot, man. Like, right now. No, no, right now. There's a situation. Okay, hurry. All right, Peter. He's on his way. He better be. We're some real shit here. This fucker needs to get here in a hurry. Fuck, Peter. Keep your pants on. Give him a few minutes to get here, man. It's all right. Ah, oh, this is bad. Real bad. Damn it, Bob. Well, folks, now this is getting interesting. So be sure to tune in next time to see if Bob and Peter Scammick can keep their car lot open. Feeling hungry but don't want some average brunch? Do you want fancy food like smoked salmon and caviar? Brioche with prosciutto and egg? 
asparagus and zucchini frittata, eggs benny toast, eggs benedict, or glazed salmon rolls with pecan swirl. Well, no brunch is complete without a world-class mimosa. Well, all right then, that's what makes us here at Horny Jack's the best brunch in town. Horny Jack's Strip Club has been put number one in the tri-state area. Plus, we have the hottest servers anywhere. So hurry in for the best brunch and strippers. Our brunch has been chosen number one for three years in a row from Food Magazine and Hottest Asses by Penthouse Magazine four years in a row. Please, don't keep the ladies waiting. We've been STD free since 93. Hurry in today. Happy Jack Strip Club is located across from Hillside Mall and next to Skimmick Motors. Hi, Pat here from BTA, and after listening to our commercial, we decided it doesn't do the full justice without some testimonials. So, here's the first one. Hi, I'm Billy. I booked with BTA and got the budget package. I got seven bumpy flights to Germany, where I shared my janitor closet with a raccoon. I named him Butch. The pamphlet was quite useful, and I got to see some neat sights. Eventually, I got to go skiing downhill with 2 by 4s Thanks, BTA, for a memorable experience. And now, another testimony. I'm a dishwasher by trade. I don't get many hours, only get paid minimum wage. I never thought I'd be able to travel abroad. That was until I found budget travels. It was incredible. BTA had a package I could sort of afford. I had gotten their executive premium budget package. Sure, travel was hard and the accommodations were shit and the locals robbed me, but I still got to travel abroad and that gives me bragging rights to my two friends and family. BTA is the only way I'll ever be able to travel abroad again. Thank you, Tracy. Not convinced? Here's the one testimonial that will win you over. My name is Charles, and when you live a life of stupidity and ineptitude like I have, you usually have to leave town on a moment's notice. So I went to the good old BTA and went to get a flight. I mean, they have so many different plans. How could I not? But imagine my surprise when I found out you need something called money. Well, the good guys at the BTA told me they'd get me to Texas anyway. So they hit me in the head, put me in a box, and 24 hours later, I arrived in Texas. Thank you, BTA. Put your hands together for Bubba's Corner. And here's your host. Hey guys, Bubba here. Today, I decided to choose a long one. We went and decided Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, which is a movie based off of a book written by J.R. Tolkien. And unless you've been living under a rock since before 2001, Lord of the Rings is a fantasy movie with wizards, elves, orcs, and hobbits. The movie begins with a, a pretty long intro explaining the rings. Three to the elves, seven to the dwarves, and nine to mankind. However, Deep in the fires of Mount Doom, Sauron crafted another, one ring to rule them all. A war ensues and Sauron loses the ring to Isildur during a fierce battle. Isildur takes the ring and it corrupts him. After two and a half thousand years, Gollum finds it. The ring ends up twisting his mind and lets him live for an additional 500 years. After a certain amount of time, the ring abandons Gollum oh, poor and Gollum. Bilbo Baggins finds it. Many, many years later, the ring would awaken. Gandalf the Grey, a wizard, was visiting the Shire for uh, Bilbo's birthday. He meets up with Frodo, Bilbo's nephew, and then to visit his old friend Bilbo. When Gandalf finds Bilbo, he informs him that he is planning on leaving the Shire. He needs to find a place to clear his head so that way he can finish his book. Later that day, a huge party is thrown for Bilbo. Gandalf has bought a bunch of magical fireworks and two specific hobbits, Merry and Pippin, steal some of the fireworks and there's a giant spectacle and fireworks going off and exploding but they end up setting off one that takes the form of a dragon Oof, and wrong. it flies over the shire almost burns down 
everything. Oh, God. Yeah. Don't trust them with your catering. A little bit more time passes by, and Mary and Pippin are now working uh, dish duty, and Bilbo prepares to make, make a speech. He stands up on a log and says, I regret to announce this is the end. I'm going now. I bid you all a very fa fond farewell. He looks at Frodo and mutters goodbye. And then suddenly he vanishes. It shows in the movie throughout that scene that Bilbo is hiding the, the ring behind his back. Mm -hmm. And when he puts it on, he becomes invisible. So he takes this opportunity to rush to his house while everybody's all like, Oh my god, where did he go? <laughs> <laughs> back at his house, um, he's looking through all his things and Gandalf shows up. Gandalf was aware of the ring and demands that Bilbo, Bilbo hand it over. But after an argument, Bilbo gives it to him, and then he leaves the Shire. Um, Gandalf leaves the Shire? No, Bilbo leaves the Shire. So Gandalf stays in the Shire. Probably to clean up. I don't know. Um, during this scene, Gandalf picks up the ring and senses great evil for a minute, and he starts to, like, freak out a little bit. And later on, uh, Frodo shows up, um, and he's like, oh, no, Bilbo left. And Gandalf's like, yeah. He's gone to the elves. And then Gandalf gives Bilbo the ring. I Wait, Frodo. Gandalf gives Frodo the ring. Why does Gandalf want Frodo to have the ring? Um, Because Bilbo wanted him to have it. Bilbo left everything to Frodo, but including the giving, ring. If he sensed evil in it, why is he giving it to Frodo? Why didn't he just keep it to himself and not mention it? Because the ring wants Frodo. Okay. The ring, the ring gets what the ring wants. The ring gets what the ring wants. <laughs> He tells uh, Frodo to keep it safe and keep it secret. Gandalf leaves saying that he has things he must attend to. This task was to head to, um, I don't know if it was like some wizard capital or some shit, but he goes to like a giant library and reads a book that uh, pretty much tells him that the ring that he's got, that Frodo has, yeah. if it reveals uh, writing when it's thrown into a fire, that it's the one ring, the ring of power. So Gandalf returns, he takes the ring from Frodo and chucks it into the fire. And they let it cool off, he gives it to Frodo, and Frodo, he asks him, uh, can you see anything on it? Frodo's like, no, I don't see anything. Gandalf turns around and lets out a sigh of relief, but then Frodo says, actually, I see something. Oh, great. I can't quite read it. It's some sort of elvish. Um, it's now that Gandalf informs Frodo of what the ring is. Then Frodo says that they should take the ring and hide it. And tries to hawk it off to uh, Gandalf. But Gandalf's like, I can't take that ring. Through me, it would wield too much power. Yeah. And... This is where I want to install some lore time because they don't do it in the movie. They probably do it in the book. I haven't read the books. Sue me, Lord of the Rings fandom. They're very picky and very peculiar. But um, Gandalf is not just some wizard. All, not all of the wizards in Middle-earth are not just some wizards. Okay. They are deities. They're pretty much gods. Oh. They are called the Maiar. Or they are spirit. They're Maiar spirits. They, what they are called is the Istari, and then the Istari is an ancient union of of uh, wizards. And so yeah, the ring corrupts anybody who takes it and makes them use. They get greedy, and so through yeah, and so through Gandalf, that ring would just cause the absolute end of the world. Oh, okay. Because Gandalf's a damn near a god. I forget there was like a ladder thing I saw, but it, I haven't seen it in a while. But Gandalf's pretty high up there. I think the eagles are like first place on uh, power level. Okay. Gandalf tells Frodo to take the ring and leave the Shire and go for a bar in Bree called the Prancing Pony. They hear a noise from outside and Gandalf takes a stick and jams it into the bushes and just clocks Sam Gamgee right in the freaking noggin. Nice. They uh, discover that Sam had been eavesdropping and that pretty much sealed his fate because Gandalf sends him and Frodo off to take the ring to the Prancing Pony. They're taking the hobbits to Isengard. <laughs> uh, as they prepare to leave, Gandalf tells Frodo not to put the ring on because it, the ring is looking for its master okay. and it will find its way to its master. And that putting it on is what it wants Frodo to do. The friends travel on and Gandalf rides to Isengard to seek counsel from Saruman. Saruman tells Gandalf that Sauron can see everything with the great eye. He warns that Sauron's forces were already on the move to find the ring. He locks Gandalf in the tower and says that they should join Sauron. The two fight and Gandalf gets like, that's that scene where uh, Saruman takes Gandalf's uh, stick 
Okay. And starts like spinning him in circles. Oh, okay, yeah. Smearing his face on the ground like he's a bad dog. So, uh, oh, so when he was trying to play Beyblade with him. Yeah, when he was playing Beyblade with him. And then he takes him and throws him up to the top of the tower. Okay, okay. Uh, out on their journey, uh, Sam and Frodo happened upon Merry and Pippin, who were stealing from a farmer, escaped to a road uh, after being threatened by said farmer and almost getting caught. Um, Frodo hears some shrieking and starts, like, freaking out of it like he can sense something something evil's coming so he tells them all to hide so they jump off the side of the road and underneath a giant tree um a wraith shows up on a horse and starts like sniffing around from the ring i guess it just starts sniffing around and what does it's a ring wraith okay so it's like a dog bark bark <laughs> no it's a ghost with a giant oh, sword okay oh those things that look like my sleep paralysis demon uh, the screeching things that were after Frodo? Yeah, they... Okay. They, Frodo starts to run, and he trips and falls, and he ends up, uh, almost putting the ring on, but they, uh, Wraith runs off and just fucks off because it didn't find anything. They run through the night. Bad at his job. Yeah, they, uh, run off through the night, trying to escape and avoiding the Wraith at all costs, but, um... The wraith ends up catching them, and they flee to a ferry on the on the on a river. Mary and Pippin are like, "Oh, we can use this ferry," so they jump onto it. Frodo almost doesn't make it, but ends up making a big old jump that I find very unreal for his size. Mm -hmm. Hobbits are small, and he made quite quite the leap. <laughs> and he gets onto the ferry, and again the wraith fucks off. It's much later into the night now, and they arrive at the uh prancing pony and it's here that they meet another important character and for this moment i'll just call him what they call him strider actually kind of important oh but uh yeah as they're there while they're there uh the ring starts to call to frodo and Does it call him on like a cell it phone it starts to, it's literally starts to, like whisper his name oh and he was like he was like looking at it and shit and then all of a sudden you hear a frodo baggins baggins i know a baggins frodo baggins he's over there <coughs> and he blew their cover because Pippin did. Yeah, of course. It was fucking Pippin. It sounds like a Pippin thing to do. Yeah, Pippin blew their cover, and um, uh, Frodo starts running because he didn't want his cover blown. Yeah. And while he's running, he trips over some feet because he's small. People are big, mm -hmm. and he lands on his back and reaches out for the ring, and the ring red lands right on his finger. And he disappears. And while he's in there, he's like looking around, seeing all the, how everything is shadowy and shady. Mm -hmm. And then he sees the Eye of Sauron. And then you just hear, I see you. He takes it off and Strider grabs him and says, you're making quite the scene. Uh, takes him off into a room and they talk for a while. And the Wraith shows up. They hunt Frodo down, but don't find him. From a safe area, Strider explains that they are actually called the Nazgul. And are drawn to the power of the ring. Oh. So every time Frodo puts the ring on, the Nazgul know where to find him. Oh, they can, like, see him. Yeah, they can, like, find him down just because he put the ring on. Which is another reason they always seem to be trailing him. So because, because because the ring's basically like a heat-seeking target on him. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the listeners that know about Lord of the Rings, everyone can agree that Frodo is pretty fucking useless. He just happens to be the one the ring. Some time passes and they travel to their next location mm -hmm. that Strider uh, says it's Rivendell. So they're going to the home of the elves. Do the elves, elves have a problem with the hobbits? I don't think so. Aside, aside the fact that I think everyone in Middle Earth thinks hobbits are thieves. Thieves? Yeah. Oh, oh they have that kind of connotation against them? Yeah. Um... But so, at the same time, aren't they kind of just like viewed as neutral? But Strider takes them on their way to Rivendell, and it's a big travel scene. Beautiful shows scenery. I skipped it <laughs> just for the sake of not needing to watch three hours of shit so I can write this. Yeah. <laughs> I've already seen the movie hundreds of times. Uh, meanwhile, in Isengard, Isengard, Isengard. Did they take the hobbits there? No. Isengard. That's, the, that's not even this movie. Oh. Saruman concerts with uh, Sauron. Sauron instructs him to build an army worthy of Mordor. So that's exactly what he does. Um, he starts sending goblins and orcs and shit to start destroying all the trees around okay. and making a huge army. Uh, 
from oh, atop boy. the tower, Gandalf sees all of this and unfortunately just has to sit there and watch for a while. Sauron does? No, Gandalf. Oh, Gandalf. Yeah, he's on top of the tower. Oh, he's, he's just stuck kinda... up there because of the gray guy or white guy, right? Yeah, because of Saruman. That's what I meant, yeah. Yeah, then it is a little confusing, Saruman and Sauron, yeah. Back to the group, they arrive at their, uh, at a camping position that they were going to stay for the night. Um, and hobbits do the hobbit thing and like to eat a lot. Yeah. So, Merry, Pippin, and Sam lit a fire and started cooking sausages and potatoes and boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. That's not this movie, I don't think. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was a bad idea because lighting a fire while the Nazgul are hunting you down, yeah. <laughs> Give away just just add some more you? heat to that heat-seeking missile you're carrying. That, that, that's just 101 on not being detected. Yeah, yeah. so they, uh, they definitely gave away their possession. We, we learned that in the military pretty, pretty, pretty early on. And the Nazgul descend upon them. Uh, but Frodo, they, they try to defend themselves. But Frodo, being the little bitch he is, drops his sword and, like, backs up. Yeah. And then he falls down and starts cowering into a corner. And then um, he puts the ring on, hoping that it would hide him from them. No. And then what he sees before him are... Absolute, uh, nightmare. absolute nightmare fuel. It's nine undead, ancient uh, elves. They reach for the ring, and Frodo like yanks it away. Uh -huh. So the wraith gives him like that. Oh no, you didn't! <laughs> and stabs him in the chest. Oh shit! Or stabs him like right in the shoulder. Um, I can Strider see appears. Elijah Wood's panicked face right now. <laughs> Covered uh, in dirt. Strider shows up and attempts to save everyone's lives. There's a big fight, and he's like sword fighting with all the Nazgul with the ching, ching, ching. Yeah. And he even uses his torch and he catches a few of them on fire. They don't like fire, do they? They don't like fire. And they all start to run away, now, shrieking. Is there like, like a war reason behind that that you're able to tell me? Or um, is it uh, just something they haven't explained? I don't know, dude. Okay. I'm not that deep into it. Okay, I was just wondering. I like it, but not enough to wonder why the Nazgul ca uh, don't like fire. It jumps over to Isengard again, just to show off Gandalf in distress, I guess. Uh -huh. And it shows that the uruk have built a massive like army. They're building swords and piss off. Uh, they have like already a, like, a fortress built up. And Gandalf, on top of his tower, sees a dragonfly. He a catches dragon? it. A dragonfly. Oh, dragonfly. Yeah. He catches it and whispers something into its ear, and then it flies off. It didn't then... like what he had to say, did it? <laughs> I guess he just didn't like the smell of his breath. Oh, probably. Imagine old wizard, old man wizard uh, breath. Yeah, probably smells, smells like, like a moldy testicle. And sage. <laughs> 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 Over the next day, Frodo, uh, had been, uh, Frodo's condition had been worsening. Yeah. Since he was stabbed with a special sword, poisons him. Strider sends Sam to find an herb to slow the poison. And while searching for the herb, Arwen shows up. And Arwen arrives to Frodo's side and decides to uh, take him by horse to Rivendell since she's fast. On the way there, they were chased the entire way by the Nazgul. And they uh, get to a river. And Arwen stops, turns around, and does her crazy elf magic. And makes a giant wave of, like, horse water. <laughs> That's the best way to explain it. Water, but it's horses coming out of the water yeah okay and they uh tackle the nazgul out time passes and if you had the extended edition this is like the most meme worthy part of the movie uh frodo wakes up and sees uh gandalf sitting on a chair in the special edition they make funny faces at each other like oh gandalf wow. frodo my boy because he almost died man so he wakes up but um not in the normal edition it just Gandalf sitting in a chair and he tells him how long he's been out, where they are. He explains that he almost didn't make it. And Frodo asks why Gandalf didn't meet them at the uh, Prancing Pony. Pony. He's like a little upset with them. He says that he uh, was held captive, almost died, until he used his escape plan. The, I'm assuming, and I'm pretty sure everyone else assumes, that the dragonfly flies off to tell the eagles to come and get him. Because he was about to fight Saruman on the top of the tower. And he just rolls off. Isn't Saruman in the movies played by the same guy who did Count Dooku? Yes. I just want to make sure I was picturing the right person. Sir, I feel Sir like Sir Ian McKellen? Yeah. No, yeah. Exactly. As the day goes on, Sam and Frodo start to explore Rivendell and just seeing all the sights to see of elven kind and whatnot. And they find Bilbo. 
Bilbo shows Frodo his book called There and Back Again, A Hobbit's Tale. It's the one thing he had been working on pretty much his entire life. And how old do hobbits live till? I can't tell you off the top of my head. That's something you'd have to look up. I don't like homework, but okay. Um, they reminisce a little bit, and I just decided to not write down more for that scene. Okay. Later on, Elrond and El Elrond and Gandalf converse a bit about the ring. Elrond doesn't want it there. Says that the elves would not be able to hold off an army of orcs, let alone the armies of Mordor. And uh, Elrond decides the ring can't stay in Rivendell. He says that he was there the day that Isildur found the ring, and that he threw it away. Threw away the chance to destroy the ring. Gandalf says that. Mankind can be better than being weak and says that there is uh, one more that can make it right And then it, the scene swaps to Strider This is when we learn that he is Isildur's heir And we also learn that his real name is Aragorn, son of Arathorn Aragorn, Aragorn? <coughs> Aragorn Oh, uh, that movie was such a flop, could have been so much better Aragorn, son of Arathorn. Um, he talks to Arwen a little bit here, and we learn that they're a little bit of a piece. They're an item. Put it on that receipt. The next day, Elrond summons a council. They decided who would deal with the ring, and Frodo volunteers, seeing how he needs to be uh, protected. More people volunteer, and the fellowship is formed. Frodo, Sam, Gandalf, Aragorn, Gimli, Legolas, Merry, and Pippin. And Boromir. I put Brodo. <laughs> Bro goes back. Frodo goes to see Bilbo one more time, and Bilbo gives him his old sword, uh, Sting, the one that he used against Smaug. Sting, the blue sword that lights up when there's ogres nearby? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. You gotta right, you hit the name, uh, <laughs> hammer on the head. That was what the I one, wrote on there, too. The one random thing I know about it. He also <laughs> gives him uh, a uh, mithril chainmail. Mithril can't be pierced. That's nice. It's overpowered. Uh, yeah. yeah. They just straight up gave Frodo his plot armor. <laughs> they gave yeah, uh, Frodo armor. his endgame weapons and armor? Uh, the next morning, the Fellowship travels out to go destroy the ring. They stop for breakfast, and Boromir uh, starts to train the hobbits so they can be ready for a fight. So we and can take them to Isengard. He's sitting there and he's like ting 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 in with Merry and Pippin and they end up like tackling them and shit. He thinks they're cute like kids, I guess. It's a little weird. Gimli complains hey. that they were taking the long way and suggests that they cut through the mines of Moria. Gandalf says no and that he would only take that that path as his last option. Moira? Moria. Moria? Moria. What's up with the mines of Moria? The mines of Moria? The mines of Moria is dangerous. Oh. Pretty dangerous. You'll see. Uh, suddenly, they're a black cloud of flying creatures called the... I can't remember, dude. It was a really weird word. It's hard, hard to pronounce. They were pretty much bats. They were like scouting bats. They appear and start to like fly over them, and everybody runs and takes cover. That cuts off the one, their one route since they were just spied on. So they decide to take a mountain path. And Isengard, Saruman hears this from his uh, spy creatures, the Krebrine. That's what they're called. And then he Weird. plots a move. Weird ass name. Yeah. On the mountain, Legolas senses Saruman's magic and a rock plummets onto them. They dodge it and Gandalf starts to chant some magic trying to counter the magic attack. Uh, but Saruman completes his magic and a bolt of lightning strikes the mountain and a giant like land or would it be a snowfall or avalanche i guess Wind falls slide. onto them it like falls off the top of the mountain uh they all get out and gimli suggests that they take the mines of moria gandalf said like who's like struggling with the idea and says to let the ring bearer choose and frodo says that they will go through the mines dumb and they enter the mines to find all of the dwarves that live there to be long dead legolas finds proof suggesting that it was goblins that killed them they find uh, the tomb of one of Gimli's ancestors, and Gimli gets all sad, and then they're attacked. They're attacked by a giant squid. Oof. Calamari, I it guess? Picks, yeah, it picks up Frodo, and Frodo starts screaming, being useless. Uh, Boromir saves him, and then they run into the mines themselves, and then they're trapped, and the only way they can go is forward. They come up to some, like, random, like, three-way passage. And Gandalf stops, and he's just standing there looking at him, and then he goes, I have no memory of being here. So he just kind of sits there and ponders for a moment. Um, that's and while all they're doing this, all the other guys think that he's going insane. Um, but Frodo sees Gollum and then tells Gandalf, and Gandalf says, like, yes, that's Gollum. He's been following us for three days. And he didn't, and he didn't have the foresight to tell anybody else? No, I guess not. That's kind of rude. If you know somebody's following your group, at least let somebody know. Right? Yeah, so uh, after that, they find the way to go, and they travel into an old dwarf city, and it's there that they find Gimli's cousin's tomb. 
they find a book that explains exactly what had happened mm -hmm. to cause all the deaths. And then they are suddenly attacked by a bunch of gobbos. They engage the goblins in a fierce battle. And even a troll shows up. During the fight, Frodo yet again gets stabbed. Uh, they take down cushion. the troll and rush to Frodo, but thinks that the mithril, he was unharmed. The Fellowship flees through the mines as the thousands of thousands of goblins chase after them. They stop into a light and they start to take up a defensive position surrounded by the goblins. Yeah. And then the, you hear a roaring in the background. You got Ubermecha Goblin. And then the goblins like start freaking out and they all run away. The Kabul Lord. Gimli thinks that they're just fearsome, but Gandalf uh, knows what's coming and he senses a fro- uh, a foe and says that it's a bell rock. They start to run and jump across some broken stairs. Mm -hmm. And the entire time they're being chased by the bell rock. Okay. And rocks are falling and crushing these stairs even more and more. And the only two people left were, I think, Aragorn and Frodo. Yeah. And Frodo was too fucking scared to jump. And then a rock falls behind them and makes the path unstable. And it starts to fall. And then they end up jumping onto the other. They take off and run past uh a, onto a bridge and it's here that we find gandalf stops looks behind him and starts to fend off the balrog and we hear the you shall not pass so he was xp farming he didn't want anyone else to have any of the xp exactly so he told the party to go on without him so <laughs> that he could have the five or six levels he was going to gain from it Essentially, just, because just to evolve his class. Essentially, because he uses elemental hazards to collapse the bridge and sends the Belrog to hell. Um, okay. But before he escapes, the Belrog trips Gandalf, and Gandalf is hanging off the edge of the bridge, uh, about to go fall to his death. They go to try to save him, but they don't. And before he falls, he says, "Fly, you fools! Fly, you fools!" Now this can be uh, speculated that he meant to use the eagles to fly to Mordor. Yeah. But a lot of people say that's a stupid idea. Whatever floats your boat, man. All of them minus Gandalf escape and continue their journey. On the way, they're ambushed by some wood elves. And the wood elves take them to their leaders. While they're there, uh, they take refuge. And during the night, Frodo wakes up and follows the uh, mother of the woods, is what they call her. Her name's Galadriel, and follows them to, like, a well, I guess. Maybe it's a spring. What did it look like? There was a bowl, and then there was a waterfall with some water. No, was it yeah, a big, it's hard to... Was it smaller or a big area? They called it the mirror. Oh. Um, he, uh, she tells him to look into the mirror, and he does. And he sees all of his friends, and then he sees the Shire burning. And then he sees the uh, Tower of, Sar of Sauron. And then he sees the Eye of Sauron. He freaks out and Galadriel uh, warns Frodo that someone wants to take the ring and that the Fellowship is on the verge of breaking. He offers her the ring and she has a freak out episode and it scares the shit out of him. But she says that she will, that she won't take it. And then she tells him that he's the only one that can. The Fellowship sets off, ag off again. Um, and Frodo had recently that night. It, I don't know why it only shows it as a memory. But Galadriel had given Frodo the light of Arendelle, uh, which is like a bottle. Okay. It's like a bottle of light. They travel by water closer to Mordor, uh, and it goes on another scene of beautiful sights. Awesome. How many but times does it do it throughout the movie? movie? It does that. Just beautiful sights. A lot. Just constantly, all the time. Why do you think the movie's almost three hours long? They go for the, padding the, the books, runtime. The books apparently have a lot of traveling going on. Yeah, that's it's a lot of traveling. Okay. Because journey that matters not the destination my friend they arrive at a shore and discuss which way they're gonna go and they're talking about which way to go and Gimli says go this way and everybody's like no we're going this way um but Legolas uh starts talking to Aragorn and says that he felt the shadow of a threat Frodo starts to take a walk and just happens upon Boromir who I guess was collecting firewood because he's just got a bunch of sticks in his hands and they get into an argument about the ring Vormir actually attacks Frodo uh, to get the ring, and Frodo puts it on and vanishes, hiding from Vormir. Uh, Vormir just starts like sitting there and rocking back and forth, going, S "Frodo, Frodo, my friend, I'm sorry." <laughs> Poor guy. While he's got the ring on, he sees the eye again, 
Mm -hmm. I don't know why he hasn't learned his lesson. He takes it off and freaks out, and uh, he stumbles upon Aragorn now. Frodo uh, like starts like backing away from him. You can't have the ring. And Boromir's like, I don't want it. And then Frodo's just like, would you destroy it? Would you destroy the ring? And Boromir reaches for the ring and then closes Frodo's hand around it and says, I would de I'm with you the entire way or something like that. Okay. Suddenly a bunch of orcs appear and a battle ensues. The battle takes on into the woods and they fight, uh, taking down orc after orc. Uh, Boromir causes a distraction by blowing the horn of Gondor. And this scene is very memeable. And if you've seen Ted Laird of Toe Rings on yes. YouTube, this is the perfect moment where Boromir just goes, do, 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 We need do, to do. find a, uh, we need to find that, put that in the description for people. Yeah, it's funny. While he's out there, Boromir starts fighting and he gets shot with an arrow. Really strong orc shoots him with an arrow but he still continues to fight and then he's shot with another arrow but he, he starts fighting fight. he keeps trying to fight and then he's turned into a pin cushion oh man uh everyone else appears and starts killing off all the orcs and finally does they finally finish the fight and discover that mary and pippin were definitely taken by the orcs as a few of them escape and upset frodo says that he will take the ring alone so he gets in a boat by himself starts getting out onto the water but sam chases him of course he does um sam didn't know how to swim because the moment he gets in the water he sinks to the bottom like a rock oh no and frodo pulls him out and they have a romantic journey they have a romantic talk are they an item they might as well fucking be I don't know if you've seen the movie, but Frodo and Sam are always complimenting each other. Like, you are great, Sam. Or, I'm always here for you, Mr. Frodo. <laughs> uh, back on the shore, Legolas is like, come on, don't we have to go after him? And Aragorn's like, no, he's going to do what he wants now. Besides, we should go find his friends. Legolas agrees, and Frodo and Sam finally make it to the border of Mordor. And exactly what I was talking about before, Frodo and Sam are sitting there talking. And Frodo's saying, like, I'm glad you decayed with me Sam and then so they keep dick riding each other yeah and then the movie ends with them going down a, a mountain no I thought you were going to say going down on <laughs> each other hey, whoa. I was like damn okay we called it closing thoughts um, 10 out of 10 I really like Lord of the Rings the extended edition is much better mm -hmm. but that would have been like a four and a half hour movie Yeah. and I wasn't about to do that yeah it's the main reason why I never watched Godfather it's a great movie, it's beautiful, and it's very meme-worthy. So with that, that's all I have for you. Alrighty, and that was Bubba's Corner. And now, introducing a promo for our DTZ Late Night. From Somewhereville, USA, it's DTZ Late Night. <laughs> and here's your host, Dill James Doe. Hello everyone and welcome to the DTZ Late Night. I'm your host, Dill James Doe, and tonight is the first taping. Surprise, surprise. I can't tell anyone else that knows this. Anyway, we're going to be bringing you the best guests our camera crew could find. And today, it seems they've gotten a doozy. We're about to find out what the world of stretches, lifting weights, and taking supplements is all about. Let's all put our hands together for Chad Jimbroski. Oh yeah. Hey Dill, what's up? I'm Chad, and I'm glad to be here. Not to mention that I'm ripped as fuck. I mean, look at these pecs. They're absolutely rippling. This is a nice fancy studio you got here, Dill. How is everything around here? Oh, fuck, he's a talker. Just remember this, man. This is my show. My name is in the title. Not yours. So first off, we're going to start off with the Q&A. Uh, we want, our audience wants to know who you are. We're going to get to know you a little bit. You're a gym goer at Larry's Gym, aren't you? Oh, absolutely, Dill. I've been going to Larry's Gym for a few years now. That is years phenomenal. Now. Holy crap, such a beautiful story. I don't think I've ever cried so hard in my life. I even tooted a little. Um, uh, is it true that you use Sloan Corp's bodybuilder ball sack filler? The world wants to know. No, no, no. They need to know. I mean, that's a little personal, don't you think? No, not at all. But yeah, absolutely. I totally use bodybuilder ball sack filler. I mean, it's all fun and games to get a, to get a body to peak perfection. But if you're neglecting your marble holders, then what is the point? 
You can't say you're a bodybuilder if not every single part of you is absolutely toned and ripped. I guarantee you that I'm taking care of every single part of my body. <laughs> he guarantees it, folks. You heard it here first. This guarantee, might I add, brought to you by the bodybuilder ball sack filler's parent company, Sloan Corp. Did you know they're the shadiest company ever to grace Somewhereville soil? Um, since you do, uh, you know, use the bodybuilder ball sack filler, do you agree with the fact that they're putting, quite literally, pure LSD inside their creams, and they don't make note of that on the packaging? I haven't tripped so hard in my life, ever. Uh, man, I'm, I'm actually not at liberty to say, since I'll be mer I mean, fired if I say anything. I can tell you this though, Larry's Gym will get you swole as fuck or your money back guaranteed. We take those weak little biceps and turn them into manly chunks of steel. Yeah, I betcha. It's about time to close out this episode of DTZ Late Night with Dill James Doe. Have a good night everyone and remember, don't be a dipshit. DTZ Late Night is a DTZ Entertainment production. Remember, don't be a dipshit. Thank you for listening to Coffee Bar Stories. This is your host, Dad. This is Son. And I'm Bubba. And don't forget to check us out at ttzentertainment.com.